Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, March 4th, 2015. I had to glance down at the uh, little calendar on my computer here. My name is Jessica, and I am your host. This is the Sarah Nova Crafts Podcast. Yay! You have probably already noticed the slight change in venue. I have moved from our second bedroom to our living room couch. Um, the lighting, if I open the blinds, the lighting coming from our big uh, sliding glass door there that goes out onto our balcony um, is much more even. I still look pale and pasty as white as ever, but it's more even and you actually get to see the other side of my face for once. So I consider that a good thing. Um, you'll also notice in the background we got portal poster courtesy of Kevin, Kevin's board games, um, behind, directly behind my head. There you go. Firefly poster. Then we have katanas, portal gun katanas, botlith, spear, Roman sword that I can't remember the name of. It's a good time. You want to see the rest of the collection? Let's show you the rest of the collection here. Yeah, we have a wall of swords. It's a thing. Do, 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 do. Don't mind the sound effects. All right, there we go. That's the living room. Um, but yeah, I decided to try recording out here today because I will get more even light. Um, it is a little weird because I turned off the lights out here because if I had the dining room light on, there'd be like a halo around my head and that would look really funny. Um, but it's an overcast day out because it snowed last night and there's still some cloud cover. So, um, it's overcast right now, otherwise it'd be, like, even more glaring than it is, because it's, like, white out there due to all the snow. Um, I did get a bird feeder that I put out on our porch, and the cat has been loving it. It's been, like, kitty TV time. Um, she's, like, going crazy with the bird feeder, and it didn't take the birds long to find it at all. It took the birds all of ten minutes to find it after I put it up. Yeah, it's, it's a little crazy. Um, but yeah, I guess we should get right into it. Um, thank you to, I should have written your name down, I'm very, very sorry about this. Um, oh my god, and I can't even pull it up, because, sorry, I'm trying to use the iPad to pull it up, because I'm using my computer to record, right, so I'm trying not to do everything on the laptop, and it's just not, yeah, this is a good day. This is gonna be, this episode's probably gonna be a little rough. I'm in a different location, I have stuff all around me, the cat just walked by. Hi, Colky. You gonna jump up here and mess everything up? Probably not. You're usually pretty good. Um, she's just, she's very cute. Nope, can't grab her. I tried. Didn't go very well. Um, but yes, I. as I was saying before I got distracted by computer and cat and everything, two people joined the group this past week. Yay! Thank you for joining. Um, the first person, their Ravelry name is one to one um, thank you very much. And the other person, I'm pulling up your actual name, Gloria, Gloria, thank you for joining the group, thank you for watching. Everybody else who subscribed on YouTube, thank you, I know I haven't said that enough, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you to the people I know in person who watch this podcast and tell me stuff at our local yarn shop on Friday nights, thank you. Um... Anyone else want to think? No, I think I'm good right now. Um, my boyfriend for putting up with me. You know, that kind of stuff. Good times. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll get right into it. Let me pull back up my notes because I have show notes that the notes I write up for me never reflect what ends up on the blog and in YouTube and everything. It's just anyways. First thing first, my personal sock club for 2015. Da -da 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 -da. Yay! Finished socks! They're both done. I finished these with three days to spare in February. So I finished them on Thursday. No, I finished them Wednesday night. So that gave me Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to not knit socks. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know February was a short month and everything. So, you know, it's it's not the end of the world that, you know, I still have three days left because if it was March, I would have had like five days. But yeah, it was, uh, in my opinion, a little close. So here are the socks. So here's one side. Ooh, the color's turning up really good right now. One side. They didn't pull. They didn't stripe a lot. Um, there we go. 
Um, there wasn't even any real pooling on the heels. You can see, I mean, they're a little stripy, but that's fine. I did, um, Judy's Magic Cast On for the Toe, Fish Lips Kiss Heel, 20 Rows of Ribbing, stre um, a stretchy bind off that I know that I forget the name for. And it's 32 stitches around on a U.S. size one. That's my standard personal vanilla sock pattern. Because that's what works for me. Um, and my feet are actually a little bigger than the sock blockers, so these are a little loose on my sock blockers. Um, but it works. So now that I've shown them to you, I can start wearing them. Though, like I've said before, I'm not going to wear these out and about. I'm only going to wear them like around the apartment because there is no nylon in this yarn. And because there is no nylon, I don't want to um, completely destroy them by wearing them in my sneakers. Because, yes. What is it, Koki? You're meowing at me. Um, I don't want to completely destroy my wearing my sneakers because there is no nylon. You want to come up here and say hi? You want to come say hi? She's sitting here meowing at me. This is going to keep happening because I'm not in the bedroom with the door shut. I'm actually, like, out here in the living room. Come on. You want to come say hi? Nope. I tried to grab her again. She, oh, she doesn't like it when I try to grab her, which stinks because she's a really soft kitty and I want to cuddle her, but she won't let me cuddle her. Life, it's one of those things. So, um, hey everyone, it's the 1st of March, so you know what that means. New sock yarn. So, here it is. According to my, the little note I made, this is going to be a plain sock. And it and here it is. This is Regia Forfach Halt Bar. Um, four foot dig jet set color. I can't pronounce German. Um, it's 75% superwash wool, 25% polyamide, and it's 420 meters, which is more than enough for socks. And the color is, well, I have no idea, it's a series of numbers. See, numbers. So, okay. so here's the label. And there we go. These will be socks next time you see the yarn. Or at least the start of socks next time you see the yarn. Continuing with the personal sock club, excuse the cat distraction, I cast on my March socks. Now, these are a little funky on the needles at the moment because I started the heel. Again, I'm doing a fish lips kiss heel. That's like my favorite heel ever, so that's what I'm doing. Um, so here it is. If I can get enough length for you. Ta-da! See, you can see I started the heel. I'm actually in the middle of a row on the heel. Because um, I was working on these during our Dungeons & Dragons game last night, which we have a new player, and that's been funny. We kind of got thrown into jail last night. Always good. Um, yeah, our party um, knew a non-player character. So, like, the, the guy in charge of the game makes up characters for us to interact with. And one of those characters um, ended up injured. And then the guards that were going to take him to the temple to be healed uh, kind of all got killed and he's missing. So when we went to the temple in the morning, asking how he was, because we're the ones that found him and patched him up and sent him off to the temple... Our entire party ended up in jail because um, all the guards were killed and he was missing and they suspected us. Good times. <laughs> but anyways, I was working on this during our game. And I kept taking my other taking the socks I was wearing off and trying this on sitting at our dining table doing this. So and Koki's sniffing all my stuff on the side here. Oh my god, cat. Like seriously, what's going on just today? What? What? What are you doing? Oh, she's going to be a constant distraction today. I apologize. So this is the Regia sock I showed you last time. And it looks a lot better in this lighting than it did in the other lighting in the other room. Maybe I'll record in here from now on. I like the lighting a lot better. The colors are a lot more true to, to what I... So the colors that I'm seeing on my computer screen, which is down here, because right now my webcam's above, not to the side like it normally is, um... The colors I'm seeing on my screen are actually a good match for what I'm seeing in person. Um, so maybe I'll record out here from now on because sliding glass doors, lots of light. Good times. Um, 
So that's going good. Um, so this is the first sock and it's only the fourth day of the month. So I'm on track with these um, to be done nice and quick and be able to have time for other things. Yay! So um, I put a few, I'm trying to decide which way to reach because I have stuff on both sides of me like spread out on the couch. Um, yesterday at my Barnes and Noble knitting group, sorry, I'm trying to find the crochet hook for this project so I don't lose it. This would be bad to lose. Um, well, I was at my Barnes and Noble knitting group. It's people crochet there too. We just call it a knitting group. Um, I put a few more rows on my granny square afghan, my throw. So it's getting bigger. You can see I got a lean back so you can see it all. Um, this is half, this is probably half of the thing of Karen one pound. So um, yeah, it's growing. Um, obviously each row takes a lot more yarn. So things are getting interesting, but um, I have the whole second thing of yarn for it, so shouldn't be a problem, should be fine. Uh, let's see. And I also started, remember last week I, well, for those of you that didn't watch last week or are new to the podcast, if you're new, hi, welcome, thank you um, for watching, I appreciate it. Um, I have my Ginny's cardigan and the cuff snapped on it and it, I still haven't fixed it. Though I did buy more of the yarn because my local shop still had it, I bought another ball of the yarn on Friday to make sure I had enough yarn to fix the sweater if anything happened, anything else happened. But I started my second one. Now, I showed you the yarn last time, but this time I now have the beginning of the ribbon. So if I can get it untangled. Here it is, the start of another Ginny cardigan. You have to do four four inch four inches, not four rows, four inches of ribbing at the beginning. So here you go. Um, yeah, it's not much now because I only have like an inch of ribbing, but I'm working on it. Um, the yarn's wonderful. It's nice and soft and squishy. I ended up having to go up two needle sizes. Now I forget what the recommended needle size is for the yarn. I think it's a US five to seven, if I remember correctly, but don't hold me to that. Um, but the pattern calls for a four and a six, and I am now on a six and an eight. Because you have, you're told to swatch on the bigger needles and you're giving the gauge and stocking net stitch. And for me to get gauge and stocking net stitch, I had to use a US eight with this yarn. Um, so yeah, um, I had to go up to needle sizes, but it should be fine. I'm not too worried about it. Um, let's see. I did get some other stash acquisition other than the ball of yarn to fix my ginny cardigan because that's, I'm not sure that counts as stash acquisition, that counts as running repairs on existing items. Um, that doesn't quite count as stash. But if you folks remember this um, alpaca, which you can really see how nice and cream it is now, um, the um, Hamden Hills alpaca when I messaged them last week, they did have the three skeins, and I said I bought them last Monday, all fine and dandy. Well, they came this past week. Between recording my last podcast and today, they came. So now, I have seven skeins. It's so soft and squishy. Sorry. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. Baby alpaca, 100% baby alpaca. It's undyed, and it's actually a gorgeous cream, and I'm not going to dye this. I love the cream as is. I'm not going to do anything to this yarn other than knit it into a gorgeous cable cardigan. But now I have enough yarn for my size. Yay! I'm happy about that. And the other stash acquisition was I treated myself on Friday night at my local shop because the owner has a farm out a ways in New Hampshire. So I'm in southern New Hampshire and she's up in, um, she's like a half hour, 45 minutes away from here. And she has a farm. And she has Icelandic sheep. And she can't spin all of the, the wool that they produce. And so she brought some of it in. She brought some of the fall shearing, I think it was, um, that she'd had sent out to be cleaned, processed into, I think it's roving. It's kind of roving, not really roving, but it's, it's spinnable. It's in a spinnable form. Um, but it's not roving. It's kind of like loose layers of fiber. But... Um, she had two lamb fleeces, one brown, one grayish black, but it has, it's more like a brownish black. Um, and then she had various cream and off cream and tan colors. 
and I fell for the black lamb fleece. Yeah, I was there on Friday, and I'd seen them the previous week, and it was still there on, fr I'd seen them the previous Saturday, and it was still there on Friday, and I'm like, it has to come home with me. But now I really need a wheel. Because there's no way I can spin 25.75 ounces on my spin. I don't spin fast enough on my spindle to, no. But here's the bag. And let me see if I can pull some of this out for you to see. Um, yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's, in, it's like pencil rubbing. So here it is. Um, it's like this pencil rubbing stuff. So it actually is in a nice spinnable form. It's just a little compacted in the bag. But it happens. So, let me get a nice wad of it so you can see. And here it is. It's this gorgeous brownie black. Um, and I think this is actually a sweater's quantity, but I'm not sure I want it to be a sweater. I kind of want to knit it as, not knit it, spin it as thin as possible into like a two-ply lace. Not that I can spin lace, but that's a whole other option. And make a gorgeous shawl out of it. Because, I mean, wouldn't this be a gorgeous lace shawl, like, to die for? But it is in, it's like pencil roving-y kind of stuff. So um, it's totally spinnable. I don't need to do anything to it to spin. I could totally spin it as is. Of course, I'd have to find the end. But I could totally spin it as is. Um, and this was very much a splurge. But it was a reasonable splurge. And it was actually quite well priced. And um, I don't remember the name of the lamb that this came off of. But I could probably ask her and tell you. Uh, so, but that was my big splurge this week, was I bought a lamb fleece. All of it. Because <laughs> she just has them bagged, and she isn't um, breaking them up in any way, it's just you buy the bag. And so, um, and so I was looking at them, and I like the whites, and I like the creams, but I have all of this stuff. That is that as soon as I finish my Ginny cardigan, that's getting cast on the needles. Of course, by the time that gets cast on the needles, it'll be summer, and I won't need a 100% baby alpaca sweater, but... If I can get it finished for September when it starts to get cold here, or at least we start to have some chill in the air, that would be good. That's my plan. But the, as they say, the best pla laid plans of mice and men often go awry. So I think that's... Oh, right. One more thing. Well, actually, a couple more things, because I've completely ignored my notes. So let me look at my notes here. Um, talked about the Jenny cardigan. Talked about my February socks. Talked about my March socks. Talk about the afghan. Sorry, I put something down on the coffee table, which is where the webcam and everything is set up, and it jiggled. I am doing a test knit out of this. It's actually a worsted weight alpaca. Now, it's not a baby alpaca like the white yarn. It's a, um, it's a different one. I have it in my stash on Ravelry, if I can pull it up. For some reason, the internet today is being slow. It's going to take me forever to upload this. Ugh. Um, but I follow the Entirely Crafty Girl podcast, and Lindsay, no, 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 not Entirely Crafty Girl, wrong podcast, I'm sorry, Lisa, at 90% Knitting, she's Fiber Nymph Dye Work, she's Fiber Nymph on Ravelry, I'm in her group, um, she is doing a test knit. Now, I since lost the label for this because this was some of the yarn I had to clean when Koki peed and everything. If you don't know the story, you're welcome to message me and ask me, and I will give you the whole thing. It's, it's a long one. But this is Plymouth Yarn. It is Baby Alpaca. Baby Alpaca Worsted Solids. Though it is slightly heathered um, because alpaca dyes a certain way, and it always seems to come out a little heathered. I'm not holding that in. There we go. I can actually fit both balls in my hand. Woo! Um, so, this is two skeins. The individual skeins are how much? Come on, Ravelry. They're 50 gram skeins. I have two skeins. Um, this is a cowl test knit for her. I'm not going to tell you anything else. Um, she talks about it on her blog. You can go watch her podcast and see what she's talking about. But she asked us not to... Um, give away anything on social media. So I'm not giving away anything other than I'm knitting this cowl for her, and it is a cowl, and she's put it out there on her podcast that it's a cowl. So, Lisa, if I said too much, tell me. I don't know if you watch this. Um, but I have two of these. Um, these were given to me not Christmas 2014, 
but Christmas 2013 by Kevin's, my boyfriend's sister. Um, basically, my boyfriend's sister and mom either give me a gift card to one of the two local yarn shops or actually just buy me yarn. It works out. They usually get me good stuff. Um, I haven't gotten any acrylic from them, which is good. Um, and I use the gift card to get a cone of sport weight yarn I'm going to make into a sweater um, this year. And last year I bought some lace and some other stuff. And this came from it. And I hadn't, honestly, I didn't know what to do with this. Because it's 204 yards of a worsted weight, which actually isn't quite what the pattern calls for. It's a little short. It's about 20 yards short. But I'm hoping I can manage it. Fingers crossed. And yes, I can do the cross thing. So, um, yeah, I can actually cross, if I manipulate my hand and do this, I can actually do that. I can actually cross my toes too, but I'm not going to show you that because that's just me, me contorting and everything. Um, that's everything on my show notes, but I did want to talk about the holiday that starts tonight. It's, sometimes it's on secular calendars, sometimes it's not. But the holiday of Purim starts tonight. And I'm going to make a quick note to myself to link to the Chabad website about Purim in my show notes. So that you folks can go read up on it if you're interested. Um, I'm going to type here for a second. But tonight marks the start at sundown, which honestly I don't remember what time sundown is. Tonight at sundown marks the start of the beginning of the holiday of Purim. And Purim is when Jews read the Book of Esther, also known as the Megillah. Um, and most people are familiar with the story of Esther. She married the king of Persia, King Ahasuerus. Yes, that's a tongue twister. And yes, it is pronounced Ahasuerus. You got to get the in there. Because um, it's a chet in Hebrew. And that is a sound that doesn't exist in the English language. Um, but the J sound, J, doesn't exist in Hebrew. So my name, Jessica, doesn't work. Um, my Hebrew name is actually Yohana, for anyone interested. That's spelled, and you're not, and if you don't know Hebrew, you're not going to know this, it's spelled Yud, Vav, Chet, Nun, He. And those are all consonants, there's no vowels in there. Because Hebrew doesn't have vowels. It's one of those weird languages. Excuse me, you are going to see my gigantic Mundo water bottle. Joyce and Heather, you'll recognize this. Because even though I have a humidifier running, our apartment still gets dried out because we have baseboard heat. So it's a little crazy. But anyways, Purim starts tonight at sundown. And I'm actually going to be going to my synagogue to listen to a condensed version of the reading of the Megillah. We're not doing the full version tonight because it normally takes us a couple of hours. And it is a school night, a work night. Everybody's got to get up and go to work tomorrow. Um, but it's a good time. And Purim is the kind of holiday where it's a little like Carnival. But it's not a perfect example. It's a little more like Halloween, but it's not quite Halloween either. Um, the main thing is we're supposed to celebrate the fact that the Jews in Persia weren't killed. And we got rid of all our enemies. Now, remember, this story is 2,500, 3,000 years old. A lot of violence in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Not that I've read the New Testament, but from what I've heard, there's a fair amount of violence in it. So you're going to have to excuse the fact that we killed all our enemies, we won, let's eat. That's the basic story. That's a lot of Jewish holidays. Passover is, we escaped Egypt, we survived, let's eat. Purim is, this guy and his minions tried to kill us all. We fought back, we won, let's eat, and get drunk, and dress up. Now, the rabbi at our synagogue, because I actually went to services this past weekend. I'm, I'm a bad Jew, I don't go every weekend. Um, This past weekend, the section we read in, what book was it? Deuteronomy. We read Deuteronomy this week because um, we're in Deuteronomy right now. Exodus or Genesis? No, 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 no. We're still in Exodus. Excuse me. We're still in Exodus because we're coming up on Passover. We're still in Exodus. Sorry. I get so confused sometimes. It's, I never keep the order straight. I never remember what's what. And the problem is, is that stuff is repeated in Exodus, Deuteronomy, and Leviticus. We literally get it repeated to us three times in three different books. So forgive me if I don't remember what book we are actually in, because right now we're getting what we're reading in the Torah is all the laws on how to set up our 
temple, how our priests are garbed, what our priests are supposed to do. Now, granted, this is back in the desert when we're wandering for 40 years in the Sinai. And um, we got a mobile um, ark. This is when we actually still had the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant before the first temple in Israel got destroyed by the Babylonians, which actually is historical fact was destroyed by the Babylonians, I forget the year, but then the Romans destroyed the second temple. But the Ark of the Covenant was lost when the Babylonians destroyed the first temple in Jerusalem when they took over what was then Palestine, I think was what it was going by, but what was Israel back in the day. And sorry, this is an impromptu religious lesson, but the Purim is a fun holiday. And what we do is um, we dress up, we eat, we make a lot of noise. But in, but it was an interesting Torah portion to have this week because I'm going to backtrack a little bit here. Because on Friday, I don't know, most people in the U.S. have heard by now. I'm not sure if this has reached Europe or if anybody in Europe is watching. Hi, Europe, if you're from Europe, um, please tell me you're watching. That would be really cool. Um, I think it would be really awesome if somebody from Europe was watching. That would be great. But I have no idea um, where my YouTube followers are from because a lot of them don't have locations on their pages. And I go, and when you follow me on YouTube, sorry, I didn't mean to clap my hands, I do go and look at your page. Um, I might not follow you back because most people don't have videos uploaded, so there isn't really a point in following you back, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, I do go look, but I don't know where people are from, I'm sorry. And, and sometimes on Ravelry it says, but yeah, I don't know, I'm sorry. Um, but anyways, um, in the portion we read on Saturday morning, they were talking about the garb, the priests, the, the Kohanim, um, which is one of the tribes of Israel. These are the descendants of Moses' brother, um, Aaron. Him and his kids became the Kohanim because they were descended from the Kohen tribe. And actually, my grandmother was a Kohen. But in Judaism, the, the tribe of the father is the tribe of the child. And my grandfather was just a regular Israelite. He wasn't a Kohanim or a Levite. So I'm not a Kohanim, even though my grandmother was. That's just how it works in Judaism. I keep going in circles here. But anyways, the portion we were reading was ironically timed. Because on Friday, Leonard Nimoy passed away. And my mother, and I'm so jealous of her because I would have loved to see this. Um, we New Englanders have a slight claim on Leonard Nimoy because he is a native Bostonian. He was born and raised in the west end of Boston, which unfortunately doesn't exist in the way it used to look. Unfortunately, a lot of the buildings have been torn down, other things built. But Leonard Nimoy grew up in the west end of Boston. And he's always had a soft spot for Boston and the Jews here, because he was Jewish. And my mother, before I was born, got to see him in a production of Fiddler on the Roof as Tevye. And I wish I could have seen him in something like that. I never got to see him in person. I never got to meet him. I never went to a Star Trek convention where he was. I only know him through his autobiographies, which I have read, and they are I Am Not Spock and I Am Spock, his first biography and his second biography. Autobiography. He wrote them himself. Um, but I was very saddened to hear the news on Friday that he had passed away. And Star Trek was a huge part of my childhood. I still watch it. Kevin and I, well, more Kevin than me, have been watching all the Star Trek series. Um, we've seen the new movies. And... Um, I was a fan of Leonard Nimoy, and it was sad to see him go. But it was ironic that we read the Torah portion we did this weekend. And my mom and I joked that it was cosmically timed. Because, I mean, you don't... He didn't choose to die on Friday. He really didn't. But the Torah portion was very ironically appropriate. Because the symbol, which I'm doing it with the wrong hand, but I can't do it with my right hand because I'm a lefty, so bear with me. This symbol is actually a symbol that the Kohanim in Judaism... Okay, I'm gonna show you the cat real quick. There she is. She was pawing at something on the bookshelf. <sighs> I cannot get her to do anything today. Sorry about that. Um, but he, but so this symbol, I'm doing it with the wrong hand. This symbol is used by the Kohanim in Judaism during the High Holidays, when in the Orthodox tradition, at least, they bless the congregation and they call. Adonai God down to us um, to, you know, go over the congregation. And he was apparently fascinated by this as a child. And when they needed something in Star Trek for the Vulcans to greet one another with, 
somebody had suggested like some kind of special handshake and Nimoy went, are you kidding? I'm paraphrasing here. He went like, are you kidding? They're too logical. They're too, no, they're not going to do some like secret handshake. What? So he used this symbol and it actually is supposed to represent a shin, which is a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And it does have, um, it's like a U with a center spoke. So it's got, it's, it looks like a trident with the, um, with the handle cut off. So it's just like the top part, but it's not quite shaped like a trident. But I'm trying to explain it if you've never seen it. I will superimpose one here. Okay, that's a shin. And um, so this is a shin, but it worked for the Vulcans because you could just hold it up. And because the Vulcans are a race that are a species that are telepathic via touch, it would make sense they wouldn't touch one another unless they had to. And so that's when Nimoy introduced the symbol. And so, and that became a thing. And so it was kind of ironic that we were talking about the priestly garb and what the priests did. Um, and Nimoy had used the, the Kohanim, the priests of Judaism, as an inspiration for the, the thing we know best about the Vulcans. The one thing that even if you're not a Star Trek fan, you know the Vulcans do this. I can kind of do it with my right hand. It's not that good. See, it's better with my left. Um, but we also read a second portion this weekend because it was the weekend before Purim. And we always read a section of, this one was in Deuteronomy, I think. It's where um, the Jews are told that we need to destroy the nation of Amalek. Now, Amalek is a people who there is no historical record existing for them outside of the five books of Moses or the Old Testament or the Torah or whatever you want to call it. There is no historical evidence for them outside of those five books. Now, Jewish scholars say that it's because the Jews were supposed to wipe them off the map. Now, I know that sounds really cold-hearted and callous, but there's a very good reason God told us to wipe Amalek off the map. When we were wandering the desert for 40 years, there were stragglers at the back of the column because we're walking in this big, long group God's the pillar of fire um, by night and the pillar of cloud by day. And we're following him. We're following God through the desert and we're wandering because the whole um, golden calf thing and, and all that stuff, we got to wander for 40 years. We weren't originally supposed to wander for 40 years, but then there's the whole golden calf incident and God gets mad. So we have to wander until the generation that grew up in slavery dies off. Like, no, literally, that's why we wandered for 40 years. Because the people who were raised in slavery needed to die off first. Because they were, we needed a people that were born in freedom and knew freedom to then form our country. Because if we had a country made of slaves, God didn't think it was going to work. After the gold calf incident, God was like, uh-uh, not going to work. Now, I'm completely paraphrasing here. And I don't know the chapters. I don't know the section numbers. I'm not that good at this. But, um... But there's stragglers at the back of the column. The weak, the old, the sick, um, women with young children, and most of the men who are fighters are up front. And so what it is, is that um, Amalek attacks the stragglers at the end of the column, which in the ancient Near East, no matter who you were, was a big honking no-no. It was one of the things, it was an unspoken rule in the ancient Middle East that you did not attack the weak, the infirm women and children. You only attacked those who could fight back. And this is recorded in Babylonia, Mesopotamia. I mean, this is like a thing in the ancient Near East that you didn't do this. So Amalek is seen as, the nation of Amalek is seen as having zero honor. Zero. Zilp, zitch, nada, nothing. And God gets mad. And God commands that we are to destroy the nation of Amalek. Which, considering there are no historical records of them, either they didn't exist in the first place, which is the really cynical point of view, or we wiped them all out, which is the slightly less cynical but still really religious and kind of gruesome view. One of the two. But we read this section, the weekend before Purim, because the tradition is that Haman... The advisor to King Ahasuerus, the king of Persia, try, that Haman is the guy that tries to get all the Jews killed. Because he doesn't like the Jews. Because anti-Semitism is a thing. It's been a thing for millennia. Like, multiple millennia, it's been a thing. 
Um, and it is a tradition that he is a descendant of Amalek. Now, whether that is true or not, considering like a thousand years would have passed between this incident in the Sinai and this thing in Persia, who knows? No idea. But the tradition is he's a descendant of Amalek. And the story goes that um, Esther lives with her uncle Mordecai. We never know what happened to her family. We don't know what happened to her parents. All we know is she is in the custody of her uncle Mordecai. And he overhears a plot to murder the king of Persia, King Ahasuerus. And he tells the king, and the king stops the plot, and the king is very grateful. But at the same time, the king had a previous wife, Vashti, and she becomes his ex-wife and is exiled because Queen Vashti refuses to dance naked for the king and the other men at a banquet, which as a woman, I would refuse to dance naked for other people too. Like, not gonna happen. No, no, no sorry. Um, so Queen Vashti is exiled, divorced, whatever. You don't see her again. She leaves. So the king goes on a quest for the most beautiful woman in the realm, and he ends up choosing Esther, Mordecai's niece. Now Mordecai tells her, for your own safety, now again, I'm paraphrasing, this is not what he actually says, because I'd be talking in ye old style English if I was actually reading it out of the book. Um, Mordecai tells her to not tell anyone she's Jewish to protect her, because there is anti-Semitism in ancient Persia. Fact of life. So Esther doesn't tell anyone, but her and King Ahasuerus seem to be in love. Ahasuerus is very taken with her. Um, he seems to love her a whole lot. He's very happy with her. He gives into her whims, her requests. Um, he, he humors her a lot, which seems to make people think that they really did care for each other. It might not have been true love, but they cared for each other in some way. Now, Haman is made chief advisor, and he gets the king's signet ring, which means he can send out decrees in the king's name. Now, he decrees... He talks the king into allowing him to decree that all the Jews will be killed. Now, the date he sets, he does by rolling dice. And this is why we're supposed to gamble on Purim, because Haman rolled the dice to decide the date. Now, I don't remember the date in Hebrew. This year, it works out to March 4th and March 5th, but I don't know the Hebrew date. I just, I don't know it off the top of my head, and I'm not going to look it up at the moment. Um, but... He rolls the dice to decide the date. And then he builds gallows because Haman decides to kill the Jews. And this is a really silly reason. Because Mordecai won't bow to him. Now, Jews are not supposed to bow to anyone except God. And so Mordecai would not bow to Haman because Haman was a mortal man and Haman was not God. And so that's why Haman's going, ah, I want to kill all the Jews, they won't bow to me. So... Haman wants to kill Mordecai personally because he feels very offended. So he builds gallows that are very tall and you can see throughout the entire city. And the decree goes out that all the Jews are to be killed on this date. Now, Esther finds out about this and the king doesn't know she's a Jew. So she holds th a series of three dinners and she invites the king and his advisor Haman. And Haman is very chuffed about this. He's all like, yeah, I'm important. I'm going to the queen's dinner, right? And the king's humoring her, he's, you know, and she says, I have something very important to tell you, but I won't tell you until this time. And in the meantime, she's been on, she's fasted and prayed, and Mordecai is dressed in sackcloth and mourning at the gates of the palace. And so on the third night, she reveals to the king and to Haman that she is a Jew, and that she is to be killed in however many days' time on the date that Haman set to kill the Jews. Now, Haman is shocked, pissed. The king is now furious at Haman because his wife is going to be killed because she's a Jew. And the king is not as anti-Semitic as the rest of Persia because he's like, I don't want my wife to be killed. What the hell? S excuse my language. Um, so he, the king strips Haman of his post, rounds up Haman and his seven sons, and they get hung on their own gallows. The problem is, is that the king cannot take back a decree made in his name. So he makes a counter decree saying that the Jews can fight back and that anything they take from their attackers is theirs to keep. Kind of um, the spoils of war. And he thinks it's fair that if we get attacked, and I say we, the Jews, get attacked by someone, that our attacker's property becomes ours in retribution for the attack. So Haman and his seven sons get hung on their own gallows. Poetic justice, in a way. 
Um, the Jews fight back. We defeat the forces attacking us. And so we have a feast we celebrate. So traditionally what you do on Purim is whenever Haman's name is read out loud, you make a lot of noise. We have noisemakers, you scream, you stamp your feet, you clap your hands. We're supposed to drown out Haman's name. And we're also <laughs> supposed to get so drunk we cannot tell the difference between the heroes and the villains in the story. And that's actually a part of the holiday. <laughs> but what's become traditional is we have a carnival that like kids can play games and earn tickets and win prizes. Um, when I was in religious school, we got to pie our Hebrew school teachers in the face. That was always fun. Um, but you know, it's just the little kitschy things you get like when you go to a bowling alley or um, like, like when you go to like a fair or something and you're playing those games, you get the little kitschy things. It's just things like that, cheap stuff. Um, but it's always a lot of fun. And our USY group has taken to acting out the porn story. And our rabbi dresses up and he reads it. And I've spent like 15 minutes talking about this. But the holiday starts tonight, so it's on my mind. And here she is. She finally came up here. Here's Koki. And now that I picked her up, she's going to run away as soon as I let her go. But here she is. Look at that cute little face. I try to stay mad at her and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Say hi to everyone. Hi. Hi out there in internet land. She's like, why are you talking to me? All right. There you go. Are you going to stay here now? And I got her tail on my face, of course. Um, so, but that's the story of Purim, the basics. Um, I will link the Chabad link in the show notes so you can go read more details if you so wish. Um, anything else? No, that's about it. Um, we're going to do the full reading of the Megillah on Sunday at the synagogue. Because like I said, we're not going to do it tonight. Hey, pretty girl. There she goes. She's walking on my yarn and everything. Um because we just don't have time tonight because people got to get up and go to work tomorrow it's a weeknight things like that because Purim isn't a holiday that Jews are supposed to rest on it's one of the few holidays we have where we actually go about our normal lives other than like the celebration in the evening so um yes yeah, so we're going to read the full Megillah on Sunday and we're going to have our carnival and everything on Sunday and it will be um it should be a good time and also on Saturday, my mom and I are going to a women's expo up in Manchester. I'm going with her Red Hat group. I'm going to tell you guys about that next week because I don't know what's going on there until I go. Um, but it's this weekend, so that should be fun. Um, for anyone local, like New Hampshire, Northern Mass, um, it's from 10 to 4 or 5 at the Radisson. It's through 95.7 WZID. It's $10 at the door or $8 if you order online a ticket. And she's walking on the back of the couch. She likes the back of the couch. But that's Koki walking behind me. I'm watching her in my camera here. Because there she is. There's my girl. Um, she actually talks a lot. Um, I don't know if you've been able to hear her in the recording. Um, she might not be picked up by the microphone. But um, she does talk a lot. And we think it's because she's got some Siamese blood in her. But she's got those cute blue eyes. And she's striped. And she's just... You saw the brown on her nose, and she's very cute. But I think that's finally it. Um, all my information is down here. You can find me on Ravelry as Sarah Nova. Feel free to message me. Join the group. The group is the Sarah Nova Crafts Podcast. My Instagram is Sarah Nova underscore Phoenix. Um, my Twitter is Sarah Nova. My blog is myknittinglife.wordpress.com. Um, anything else? I don't give out my Facebook. Um, I keep that personal. But I think that's it. Come join the group, join the conversation. By the time this is uploaded, fingers crossed, there will be a thread in the Ravelry group and there will be a posting on my blog. Um, it will go up on YouTube before the blog and Ravelry because as soon as it's uploaded to YouTube, my followers are told I've uploaded a video. Um, but it's going to take me a little bit to get the blog post up. So just, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that stuff. Though why I'm telling you to keep an eye out for it. Because it w you will have been watching this because you read it. Anyways, my stuff's down here. And yeah, I'll see you next week. I'll tell you about the Women's Expo. Have a good week. Bye.